Hello, I'm Paul Salverson. I'm a visiting professor at Huddersfield University in transport. I'm also a board member of the Association of Community Rail Partnerships and involved in various things to do with community rail. I've been involved in it since the start in the early 1990s. One of the things that we always wanted to do and uh, initially it was in the too difficult category was to bring lots and lots of station buildings that had been lying empty and underused a bit like this place how it was uh, 20 years ago bringing them back to life and for me the key to it is having something going on that can relate to passengers so it's not just about a community group meeting there maybe once a week in, in the evening, but having a business, whether it's a small business, a social enterprise or whatever, providing something that adds value to the railway. So it could be a cafe, it could be a tourist information centre, it could be bike hire. The, the list is endless, but I think the main thing is it brings a place back to life. It creates a warm and welcoming environment where too many stations going back to the 1960s and 1970s they lost the staff they became cold unwelcoming places by having something going on whatever it is and it needs to be appropriate to the local area it does bring that life and a sense of security as well back to stations i think the uh, the railway industry obsesses these days about security and the traditional answer has been cctv and bright stroboscopic lighting well, that isn't the answer. The answer is people bringing a human presence back to stations like this. And there are fantastic examples of success up and down the UK. It's amazing the, the breadth of different business activities that are taking place now at stations up and down the country. Probably the most unusual example I can think of was the kilt makers at Inch in the, the north of Scotland, which sadly is no longer there. Uh, but I think the, the sort of typical thing, which again really brings some life and value back to a station, is a warm, friendly cafe, often run by a local business person. You tend not to get the, the Starbucks and the Costas along, it's too small fry for them and uh, long may it remain so. But there's lots of good examples in the southwest where there's bike hire at Barnstaple for example. On the Settle Carlisle line, the Settle Carlisle Railway Development Company, which is a social enterprise promoting the railway, uh, runs a small shop and sells a range of goods promoting the railway as well as other things as well. You can buy a cup of tea and coffee. And the development company at Settle is also planning and I'm sure my good colleague Richard Burningham will be highly delighted to hear this. So they're going to open a, a micro pub on the station. So it really does depend on what's going on at the particular place. Interest that comes along from a local business person who might have an idea that nobody's thought of, like the kilt makers a tinch. But more typically, it's going to be something like a cafe, a visitor centre perhaps something selling uh, goods and souvenirs that give people something to take home with them as a memento of the journey. There's lots of lessons that, that can be learnt from the experience over the last 20 years of involving the small business sector in bringing station buildings back to life. I think first of all you do need somebody to act as an intermediary. When a Corp had its stations officer Sue Miles she was able to work with potentially interested tenants and act as an interface between them and the railway. There's loads of examples of small business people who are now uh, to, to be fair running successful businesses at stations but they'd say God, if I'd have known how long it was going to take and all the bureaucracy, I wouldn't have bothered. So I think there really is a need for somebody to hold the hand of potential tenants. But that takes us to another issue. Well, what is a suitable tenant for small stations like where we are here at, at Liscard? And it does depend on who's out there, what the interest is. And finding them, I think it's quite difficult if you are somebody running a business in a, a, a small market town or even a village who might think yeah it'd be a nice idea to put something on on the station not quite sure how to go about it 
So there is a need for that sort of encouragement. And I think from the railway side, from the community rail side, we do need to be proactive and going out finding people, you know, and I think that can often be about classic community development work where you're going into community, you're finding who the local social entrepreneurs are and small businesses, you're talking to them and say, well, look, you know, we've got a, this space here on a railway station, how about setting up shop there? And so generate the interest, but also, again, hold the hand throughout the long and often difficult process in negotiating with the railway industry. I think what we found here in the UK is that probably the best partners to have uh, is less network rail and more the train operator who will have the lease on station buildings typically but not always network rail tends to be a big and often quite distant organization very often you'll strike gold and find a manager who's really keen and supportive to have you in but equally sometimes it can be quite difficult the system doesn't support it so i think what we're starting to see now though is a very very positive attitude coming from the department for transport from from the government which is really encouraging train operators as well as network rail to see this not as something that's marginal but something which is really important in developing the rail network so with the Northern Rail franchise, for example, there's specific encouragement to bidders for that franchise to come up with some innovative ideas for particular stations. It's not just about, you know, this is a nice general idea, but identify specific stations around the Northern Rail franchise where you could actually bring the buildings back to use and then start the, the, the long, difficult and complicated process of finding suitable tenants. Nobody's saying it's easy. Uh, it would have happened 20 or 30 years ago if it was. But I think the lessons up and down the country, from Devon, from Cornwall, from Lancashire, and across in, up in Scotland and Wales, are that it can be done with determination, particularly if there's somebody there to help. And what it does is absolutely fantastic. It makes stations warm, welcoming, safe, but vibrant places, not just somewhere where you get on and off a train, but where people actually come along because it's a nice place to be, to meet friends, have a cappuccino or a latte or even have a pint at some stations. And it's all about creating a real positive sense that railways are here for the long term. They're about serving the community and helping make vibrant and dynamic entrepreneurial communities.